Hi everyone, welcome to The Shack and this video for the 37th weekend since the initiation of lockdown in the UK, the original lockdown. Um, I can't believe it's been 37 weeks, but, uh, but there you go. Um, of course, here in the UK, um, we've just come out of the second kind of official lockdown, national lockdown, which is great. Um, but for, I think, 20, I think it's tw about 23 million people, not much has changed because those people have basically transferred, well, everybody's transferred into the tier system. And I think 20, I think it was 23 million people they quoted on the TV this morning are in tier three, which has the strictest kind of, uh, which is the, 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 the strictest controls on what people can do. Um, here in Oxford, I think we're tier two, as is the most of the country. Um, I just can't believe it's been 37 weeks since since the, you know since the initial the original lockdown obviously good news on the horizon the um, Pfizer BioNTech vaccine has passed its sort of clinical trials and, and been given uh, approved for use um, which is great news um, I think the only downside with that vaccine is that it has to be stored at minus 70 degrees um, I think they use they sort of box it up and with, with dry ice so, which makes the distribution, I suppose, a bit more difficult. Um, but the efficacy is very high. I think nine, they're quoting sort of ninety-five percent. And then there's the Oxford University vaccine, where the efficacy is a little bit lower. But I think that can be stored at normal sort of fridge temperatures, you know, just a few degrees. So the fact that these vaccines um, are on the horizon is brilliant. Um, the government still has a problem because there's a quite a large group of people concerned about the, the safety of these vaccines. Um, obviously. You know, clinical trials normally take sort of three to five years and they've done everything in a few months. Um, people are kind of quoting the um, the morning sickness drug from the 60s, uh, thalidomide. Um, but of course, that's not a vaccine. Uh, and that drug was developed at a time when they almost thought smoking was good for you. So people are getting a bit confused and there's a lot of scaremongering going on on social media, no doubt. But, um, you know, that that's a difficult problem to solve, but an important one because obviously, if if you need n nearly everybody to take the vaccine, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, so that's you know another sort of problem to have. But I suppose in in a way, the fact that the vaccines or at least one vaccine is now available, another one will, should become available soon, is is, be, is good progress. Um, how that will change uh, our lives in a practical sense remains to be seen. You know, I'm still working from home. I've been working from home now for eight months, nine months, um, getting used to that. And, um, you know, it means that because I'm at home all the time, you know, I can listen to the radio. Um, you know, I don't have to travel to and from work. You know, I can, I, you know, I can listen to the radio in the morning before I start work, after work. You know, it's... Uh, uh, it, you know, from that respect, it it's good. Uh, having a hobby such as this is good, I think, for your mental health. Um, this and I, I and I've developed a penchant for growing pot plants, which I think is also good for your mental health. Um, although I've got one around here actually that's literally dying. Although that was kind of rescued from the reception at my work, um, and uh, I tried to resuscitate it <laughs> and failed. But um, you know, in the end, um, I, as I've said before, I think we're lucky that we've got a hobby that can keep us occupied for long periods of time at home, um, you know, and uh, you know, I'm thankful for it. So this weekend, um, I'm going to be, uh, a lot of what I'm going to be doing involves studying because my exam is looming. Um, I don't want to fail it. I hope I won't. I shouldn't do. I feel quite confident or reasonably confident. I haven't failed an exam for... Oh, since about ninety. Oh God, since well, since I was a teenager, in the eight, in the late eighties. So um, touch wood, um, I'll pass it. So uh, I will be studying. Um, what I have been doing, because you guys no doubt will have seen some of the videos on YouTube, is um, I've been having quite a lot of fun actually comparing the reception of uh, of various radio signals using my indoor and outdoor um, Wellbrook loops, and um, just basically looking at how the reception compares having these loops you know in indoors and outdoors and um 
It's been quite interesting. I, I, I think I've done this before, but it was a long time ago. T two of the strongest signals on, on, uh, on the media wave band, uh, transatlantic signals, a VOCM on 590 kilohertz and Bloomberg Radio from New York on 1130 kilohertz. And, and what is clear is that although you can hear both those stations um, with both antennas indoors and out, there's a significant difference having the having a magnetic loop outdoors uh in terms of the sort of audio strength and quality obviously in the end it all boils down to signal to noise uh, and we know that a magnetic loop is the best antenna um for for use um uh in a noisy environment but um what these tests have told uh, have kind of demonstrated is that if you don't have a magnetic loop and you're serious about hearing dx at home get one and if you have one if you can at all put it outdoors um, and you will improve your reception. Now, um, what's also interesting is that I copied um, Harbour Light of the Windwards from Grenada on uh, 1400 kilohertz the same evening or morning, early hours of the morning, with a very strong signal, and which was copied very well indeed on both antennas. Better on the antenna outdoors, of course, but copied perfectly well indoors. Um, and so, uh, so, it, so you know, it also demonstrates that when signals, when conditions are really good, it is possible to hear transatlantic DX indoors. Now, you know, I've done that with um, with an induction uh, loop, you know, a passive a passive medium wave box loop, effectively. Um, but um, if but you know, at, at the end of the day, a magnetic loop, something like a Wellbrook or a Benito uh, Mega Loop FX, <coughs> I consider them the gold standard. If you if you're serious about hearing really good DX uh, at home and particularly um, indoors, um, and, you know, I've been I mean I've been recommending these antennas for a, a long time, but um, these tests sort of they do they do demonstrate two things. One is that whatever you're using, a Wellbrook loop will probably outperform it. Uh, it'll cost more, but I think in terms of bang for your buck, it's worth it's worth the expense. If you're serious about DXing, if you're not that serious, then buy a cheaper antenna and you won't hear so much. But if you're serious about it, it has to be a well, I think it has to be a magnetic loop. Uh, and as I said, if you and then if you can put it outside somewhere away from the house, then do that. Even for even even like me, I just literally hang mine from the fence, which isn't ideal. But, you know, you guys have heard how I can how I sometimes copy these transatlantic signals I mean you know when conditions are really good you know these signals are booming in like local AMs so um I you know from from that point of view that is perfectly that well that's perfectly good for me um and uh you know I I, I just think that it, it makes sense almost if you if you're thinking about for example buying a new radio and it's going to cost you know for example a PL 990 that radio costs nearly as much as a Wellbrook loop. You, you, you're almost certainly, and you don't have a very good antenna, let's just say you're using a kind of piece of wire, you're better off spending the money buying a Wellbrook loop and attaching that to a good radio than having a poor antenna and attaching it to a very good radio. You're going to get better results. It's as simple as that. You know, I mean, I've copied North Korea on an eight quid radio from Tesco's, for God's sake, you know. Um, it, it, you know, they're expensive, but a magnetic loop, you know, is worth the money. Anyway, so um, I'm going to do some more of that. That's quite fun, actually. And um, I'm also going to do some comparisons. I haven't really done it. I haven't recorded any yet with the uh, Benito Mega Loop FX. Um, so I dug out my three-way antenna switch, and I've actually got all three antennas um, wired up. So Wellbrook Loop Outdoors, Mega Loop FX, which is there and then the Wellbrook loop indoors so um, a kind of three-way test um, uh, and I've been using the uh, SDR play RSPDX because that SDR on uh, with the um, um, with its it's got, got like a, um, a, a a mode uh, a high sensitivity mode HDR mode uh, for me for the medium wave band so effectively um, it's superb on, on on medium wave frequencies in the um uh in in that particular mode and um to be honest with you i think well i i actually think it outperforms in hdr mode it outperforms the wellbrook on medium wave and if it doesn't outperform it it's easily as good so um uh and you know the, the medium wave band is a is a 
is, is, is a good way of comparing these three antennas, two of them being the same, of course, um, uh, just indoors and out. So I'm just having a slurp of my tea. So I'm definitely going to be doing some more of that this weekend, possibly tonight, actually. The other thing I'm going to be doing, if I get time, is um, I'm going to be testing these two receivers. So these are kind of not stock pictures, but on the left-hand screen is a Yaesu FT990 transceiver, which is basically HF to 30 megahertz. And then on the right is an HF847. I think it's what they called an Earth station. They, Yesu marketed it as an Earth station because it's uh, HF, VHF, UHF and satellite. Um, and the reason I'm going to be potentially testing these is because there was a silent key sale. Um, well, it wasn't a sale, actually. Basically, a radio ham passed. And I think it's his son-in-law contacted Harwell and sort of said, you know, I've got this radio equipment. Are you interested in it? So we made him an offer for it. Um, a pretty low offer, actually. Well, if you to buy these two radios, what we offered the guy for the whole lot, these two radios and, and some other equipment, it would, it would cost you that to buy to buy one of these radios. Um, and so we got a good deal. Um, and it, anyway, so um, I went and picked this stuff up socially distance of course and um uh and so now we own so the club effectively now owns these two radios and you know i, I i'm i'm sort of busy at the moment so the, i don't we haven't actually decided what we're going to do with them it's possible that we might sell one of them to a club member and keep the other one uh, as a kind of loan unit um but you know Everything gets decided by a committee at Harwell, and uh, uh, and uh, I'm actually one of the committee, so um, we'll have a meeting at some point and decide what we're going to do with them. Um, what's interesting actually is the eight four seven actually covers four meters, and there's a there's, there's a few guys actually um, in the club who are interested in four meters. M zero UHF is one, and um, uh, and there's a couple of others, um, and he's interested in. Um, the 847 because it does cover four meters however um what we have discovered is that although it covers four meters um without a modification it's not it's it's performance on four meters is quite poor so um uh it so it needs that mod i don't know what that modification is actually but um there's uh, another guy um uh m m uh, g is it G8CUL? Anyway, I'll have to, hang on, let me there. Hang on. Uh, yes, G8CUL. Um, and he, he's he got two of these radios, uh, 847, modified both and worked very well on four metres. So I'm not getting involved in that. What I'm going to, what I'm probably going to do is, um, if I get time, is I'm going to, power them up and basically just make sure they work so they receive and, and that they transmit um when i when i picked up these radios there i think there was only one power supply so what the guy had done effectively is connect both radios to one power supply obviously in parallel and then just basically use them one at a time um the, the, so the, the the power supply actually was given to me with cables literally hanging off it <clears throat> so um uh, it'd be interesting. I mean, I, I don't know anything about either of these radios um, at all. Um, only I only know basically roughly what it would cost to buy them secondhand. Um, but from the sort of club's point of view, um, I just you know offered to um, to power them up and, and test them. And what I might do is is I might I might uh, I might actually use them on on our skeds. So for example, you know, on the next Friday night sked, if I get if I get round to it. I'll power one of these radios up and um, and use it on the sked, and uh, or at least use it, try it on the sked, even if I go back to the seventy three hundred. Um, so uh, that'll be interesting. It's you know not very often that you get to use a new transceiver. Um, I mean, I'm still waiting to use my my FT eight one seven because the uh, my third attempt at purchasing a, a forty five watt power amplifier for it so that i can go portable properly um is still ongoing um the the first unit ordered from 
on eBay from a company in China, didn't make it out of China. And then the same company sent a second unit that didn't make it out of China. And then, uh, and then I ordered a third unit from Hong Kong, which is obviously officially China. Um, and so far after about two weeks, I've got a tracking number and that's about as far as it's got. So, you know, let's see what happens, but um, I'm not going to hold my breath. So, um, but that's all part of the fun. So there you go. That's it for another weekend video. Um, I'll let you know how I get on with these two radios. Um, uh, there'll be updates, no doubt, on the channel with regard to comparing, continuing to compare these two uh, magnetic loops, indoors and outdoors. Um, I think what I might do, once I've done that, my end-fed wire is so good at receive. I mean, it's pretty good with uh, on TX, but it's so good on receive. It's way better than my G5RV. Um, I might actually do a test. I might do a comparison of my... Uh, oh, look at that. I guess that was in time, wasn't it? There's a plane coming over, that low cloud today. Um, on its way to Bryce, no doubt. Um... Yeah, I might actually do a, uh, I might do a comparison um, uh, of my N-fed wire uh, with, uh, with my outdoor uh, Wellbrook loop because that N-fed wire does perform very, very well um, on receive. Anyway, so there we go. I uh, wish you all a great weekend. Um, some good DX if you do listen to the radio. Um, keep safe and um, uh, let me know... Um, what you're up to on the channel with the comments and uh, no doubt um i'll uh, uh i'll talk to some of you uh, via via those comments uh in the in the uh, well early uh, early next week because i tend to upload the video and publish it on a saturday and then comment sort of from monday onwards so uh you know i know that I'm rubbish at getting around to other channels, but I do appreciate your comments. Uh, I always appreciate them. And as you will notice, unless they're rude, <laughs> hi, hi, um, I still continue to reply to everybody that comments on the channel. And uh, and I'll do that as long as I can. Interesting, actually, just what before I go, um, it took five years to get to one million views on the channel. It was last August, almost five years to the day that I started the channel. And then I, I just looked at the analytics this morning and the ch I'm already up, you know, sort of uh, September, sort of three or four months later, I'm already at 1.2 million. And uh, according to Social Blade, I'll have 10 million views in 2023. We'll see. Um, but that's not important. Um, what's important is everybody keeps well, keeps safe. and uh, and And if you can... Have a listen to the radio or have a play around with some antennas or whatever. Um, it'll keep you sane, trust me. Thanks for watching. 7 3.